Hi, I'm Sharad Kutin, and welcome to Let's Talk, the show that brings you the most important conversations in art, culture, and ideas. Today, I'm at Richard Kauf Iron Art. It's a gallery in Bangsa, and at the exhibition of Shak Koyo, uh, entitled Land of a Thousand Guilds. Shak, of course, is well known not just for his art, but of course, his uh, very visible presence in the activist scene in terms of conservation. So we're going to be talking to him about this particular exhibition and also his trajectory as an artist. Shark, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Okay, let's begin uh, with, with you. I mean, for those who don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about your own sort of history, where you come from, and how you got into um, pursuing art as a profession? Well, uh, you know, I think it's all started in, in when I was five years old. I think it's my brother then was biggest influence for me because uh, after he came back from uh, school, I was still in, in home then, he, he brought up his uh, art stationery, so he draw in front of me and a pen in front of me quite a number of times. And then I, I got, I got uh, interest you know, in, in art and then he, he, he taught me how to paint then. And then later on I be, become you know, this is what I want. This is, this is exactly mean made at, me happy. Yeah. Uh, at five, you decided you wanted to be an artist. I I don't know. I just that that time, I just loved to do art. I just doing the artworks actually make me happy. Make me, you know, fulfill my whatever imagination I have. I will just draw it. Right. Did your brother also become an artist? Um, not really, but he wants to be artist, but he is still are doing it uh, at the moment, you know, because right. he's, he's an artist on his own right. level. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's very interesting because I think, you know, we all go to school and we all learn art. Um, and sometimes art in school tends to take the art out of, uh, the fun out of the art. But um, what was your experience? I mean, five is just the start of schooling. What exactly? happen along the way to make you continue to love art? I think because when I show my, my talents in the, in the school, when they, uh, every school they have the art uh, classes and then when they show it's different on my quality of my work, then I become, uh, they, they ask me to represent the school in the art competition and that start continue until I finish my school. Just, and then of course, in the secondary school as well, I represent this, this school for art competition. I won a couple of uh, art competition. And then, then I, I really want to be artist. And then I know exactly what I want. And I asked many teachers, I asked them how to be artist, how to be an artist. And they, they give me a uh, <clears throat> pathway for me to, to focus on. And they say, you need to study in this uh, university in the, to, to get diploma and degree and then after that you can uh, show your work in the galleries and then that's it I think uh, this is what I want you know did you have any other competing interests apart from art because um, a lot of us are told that art could be a wonderful hobby it could be something to express yourself but we're often told this is not the way uh, to, to make a living you know you'll never be a professional so Keep it as a hobby. What what made you think that you could actually turn art into something that could sustain you through life? Well, actually, I got this uh, comment many many times, but that that comment actually motivated me to prove them wrong. That's that kind of you know motivations give me uh, make me think creatively. How I'm gonna use my art? It's not just painting painting. I will, you know, in art you can do a lot more than just paint. I can, I, is, I, another thing that I love to do is uh, do art workshop with a uh, school student, especially, especially in Orasli school. And uh, by giving that, 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 that workshop, it giving a lot of different perspective how because it always remind me what, when I was young that time, I don't have role model. So I, I realized that it, it, these people need that. So that's why I think it's kind of joy for me to see that the, 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 the happiness on their face when I teach them the, 
how to draw, how to paint, even how to express themselves on the artwork. Right. Your community itself, I mean, I know there are many different Orang Asli communities uh, and they, they, they have very different cultures and ways of expressing themselves. Uh, I, th I guess a lot of Malaysians are perhaps uh, exposed to the Ma Mary uh, sculptures. Those have become very famous. And then more recently, we've seen some of their uh, you know, performances on the, on the seaside performances that, I mean, here, here in fact, in, depicted in your work as well, and different Orang Asli communities. How, what community do you come from and what was their own sort of sense of art making? Uh, well, I'm, I'm from Tumuan people. Tumuan and Mamuri is very close to each other. Basically, our village is like uh, about seven kilometers away to Mamuri. Even my sister married to Mamuri. And it's the same thing with other community of Ottoman. They married, married with uh, memory because we close each other. We know each other language as well. And art in my community, in Tamwan community, we, we, you know, weaving is a part of uh, our lifestyle. In right. Tamwan, for example, uh, my, my mother is a master weaver in my village. Um, I learned to weave before I, I, I go to school itself, you know, because we, we are very resourceful in, 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 in building our life. Uh, for example, and when we, we were young, I mean, when I was young, uh, my family uh, built our, our, our home based on the uh, material that we collected from the jungle. And that, that material, we, we have to uh, you know, we weave them, in, make it into home, and and, and that is stuff I now realize. You know, even when I study university, and now I realize that actually is an art form. And yeah, I'm very interested in that because, of course, in this exhibition, uh, you know, you used some of those materials that are not traditional, as as it were, the canvas yes. of the yes. of of, of uh, paintings, but. There's also something very special about that material. It's also not something that people assume is going to last for a long time. Yep. And that's a lot of tropical architecture disappears after a while, right? It's not built in stone and so forth. So, you know, that, that um, quality of losing something, you build something, but it also disappears and the, you know, the jungle reabsorbs it. Is that something part of your own philosophy? How do you yes. think about the, those yes. issues? I think if you're thinking about sustainable world, that's what you describe is sustainable. Mm -hmm. You, of course, it, nothing is, uh, will last forever. Something will end and you need something to replace back. So we need m to make sure the, the material is there and, uh, and then in order to get the material there, you need to not to take everything uh, more than you need, for example. You, you take enough. And the rest, leave the rest to heal itself. So as soon you, when you need it back, the, the material is still there. I'm talking about the nature. Right. Oh, but, okay, so you went through art school and, you know, in school, they, I, I don't know, your teachers probably said, draw a scene of your nightmare yeah, or, or you know, Wawasan 2020, and then it'll be like flying ships everywhere. All school kids at some point had to draw this future um, images. But here, you, you, in this work at least, this collection work, and what I've known of your uh, other work, it's very much uh, grounded in your community. Uh, did you, at one point, do the kind of conventional art training with the themes that are popular, and then move back to your community? How did that work for you? Well, it's actually, when I, learned, uh, when I went to the diploma, of course, first, year, first, two, first year, second year, third year, we always, uh, you know, learn the technique, for example, uh, oil technique, acrylic technique, watercolor technique. It's all based on it. And then the subject matter is, doesn't matter. We just explore the technique. And then after four years, then, then they, they, we, they, they, get ask, they, they will ask us what, what that subject you want to paint and what, what you're gonna do, why you want to paint that subject, for example. And that actually make me think, you know, I've seen a lot of artwork out there, especially in Malaysia, nothing that portray the indigenous people. The, that, that thing is, I think, of course, during university itself, I already went to the many uh, art workshop and also uh, workshop in human rights workshop. 
and I got to know about the indigenous right then, and then I realized oh, uh, that is a really important thing that I want to tell to everybody. So I incorporate that kind of value that I learned in my work. So, and that is, is really uh, give me uh, more to think, and, and also give me a lot of uh, depth for me to, to explore. And, I did, that's it. You've been traveling quite a bit. I just have a very quick question before we go for a break. Uh, you've been traveling, I know you were in Australia and, and, and other countries. Um, is exposure, international exposure, reshaping your sense of what you can do? Yes, absolutely. Because I think, I think everybody, at least in this country or everywhere, need to travel because uh, it will adapt your your perspective on the work that you want to do and also uh, what actually you wanna wanna want to pursue in in, in longer term for example because uh, for example uh, the work that I'm now suddenly I'm uh, focusing on the uh, the weaving kind of work that's actually it come from my uh, trip from uh, trip to New Zealand and Australia when the artists, the indigenous artists in, in, the, in those two countries, they, they are so, I mean, I would say so, what's it called? What's the word? It's uh, so bold in, 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 in portraying their people, but at the same time, uh, they're using their traditional material and also, uh, you know, unconventional material in their work. And I can see that sh should be in this country, should be in Malaysia. So. And I, 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 of course, my, my biggest inspiration also is my mother, because my mother is a master weaver, because I've seen her uh, weaving the uh, pandanus mat quite a lot. So I was thinking, what a better way to convert uh, that so-called craft into something artwork. Right. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more. I'm speaking to Shark Koyo. Uh, this is the exhibition, Land of a Thousand Guilds. Stay tuned to Let's Talk. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Sharad Kutin with me, Shad Koyo. We are looking at, uh, here, we're act actually at the exhibition of his work uh, entitled Land of a Thousand Guilds at Richard Cole Fine Art in Bouncer. And we're also being treated to a thunderstorm outside. You might be able to hear some of that. Uh, and it also, in some ways, it's wonderful in that it connects with some of the work that Shark has been doing. And I'm thinking in particular of a work here called Nightmare of Moyang Bajus, uh, which has this uh, scene of desolation, the land of desolation, uh, the horizon of the Straits of Malacca with the ships passing by, the dark cloud, and also this dancer in, in traditional costume. Shark, Shark, tell us about that, about that particular work. Yeah, that I was inspired from, from my uh, trip uh, with the community of Mamari uh, near Polokeri Polo and Sungai Judah. Um, this, uh, Where Port Klang is basically. Yeah, it's a Port Klang, near, yeah. nearby Port Klang. So um, this ceremony is called Puja Pantai or Sea Worship Ceremony. So basically the, the, the two villages together, they, they, they match the the so-called so uh, shaman uh, lead the, the, the marching toward to the sea, to the toward to the beach, and then they, they they will bring food to offer to the ancestor spirit, and uh, so they will perform this uh, ritual uh, dance um, of, at, at the noon, and then the, the they offer food and ask him for blessing from the ancestor, and. While, while, while we walk into the, to the beach, and we actually saw the, the, the ship line of like a street of ship uh, uh, passing by, you know, from, from the horizon. And you can, you, can, you, actually, you actually can see some of the mangrove, uh, dead mangrove uh, tree been, been chopped down. And, and 
Now, so uh, remind me the 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 the, the, the story of uh, be, being told by the community that they they worry that the the village will be um, uh, threatened from the from the expansion of the port. So the, when 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 the port clang expansion uh, gonna go, uh, they will lose that land for them to to do their religious pur purposes, and uh, and also. It's, it's, it's also thinking about uh, uh, how long they're going to be worried about that and then thinking about how, how am I going to do uh, as an artist and to tell a story. So it's been a long time this story has been in my mind and actually it's become <laughs> one of my dreams and, 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 and I realized that I need, to, I need to paint it and I need to paint it, I need to tell the story otherwise, you know, it's my responsibility, uh, and also it's uh, everybody's responsibility to know what the uh, what the condition down there. And also, as a citizen of Malaysia, I think people need to know the the, the community. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, your work is always connected, uh, not just with the community, but also the the situation that the community finds itself. Uh, deforestation is a big issue, Absolutely. and I've seen that in your work. Um, and also, I think the question of modernization and modernity, right? So the ships in some ways represent the encroachment of a, of a very different way of thinking about life, about ourselves, about money that is, you know, grips and dominates <laughs> our society. And, but the Orang Asli communities have always been at a kind of margin to that, right? They have chosen to come into the wage economy or stay out of it for whatever reason. So there's this wonderful um, coming together of all these themes in that particular work. I, I do want to ask you though, um, how, how do you as a person balance these things? The tradition, uh, the community, its religion weaved into its art, plus the fact that you're a modern human being living in contemporary times accessing all this technology and modern education so on and so forth. I, I, do you live with a split personality? How do you deal with it? I think that's actually explained why Land of Thousand Guilt is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are this your personal sense of guilt? It's, 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 it's half of it is my personal guilt and half of it about we live in Land of Thousand Guilt. Oh. Right. So that's why the, the title if you look in another piece of my, my work, is so my self-portrait, you can see. <laughs> yeah, the self-portrait is very interesting because, uh, you know, there you've, you've erased your mouth, right? You've, yes. Uh, it's a bit literal, but w what exactly would you say if your, your ability to speak was restored in that image? You mean if the, the, the voice restored? Could come out, yeah. Well, I think we'll, we'll, uh, people will understand the, the whole situation with uh, our, our indigenous people in this country. That's the most important thing. That will help in, in the longer term, will help to heal all the wound that you know been in, been in, the, in the community. Because uh, I, I realize now so many people still doesn't understand the, uh, the situation in, in, in indigenous people because the lack of representation lack of the space for us to share our knowledge, share our stories, for example. That opportunity need to be there. That's, that's why I, in this work, I almost paint all of it in, in portrait because um, I literally <laughs> I want to, people to see at least a face of indigenous people. I easily can just paint pretty flower or, or beautiful or landscape or something, but I think most important thing for me now as an artist, because I live in the city now, you know, I feel like it's no, no many, uh, not many images being shown in the city. Well, what, what, why, why have Orang Asli disappeared? In a country where we uh, celebrate indigeneity, we say indigenous people are primary, they are supposed to be the core of our cultural politics, and yet the Orang Asli find themselves in the margins and their faces, their names. I mean, you have a wonderful name. It's, it's kind of, I don't know how many Malaysians have come up to you and said, <laughs> fellow Malaysians said, is that a Malaysian name? <laughs> have you had that? I mean, you know, why have the Orang, why has Orang Asli uh, culture and its, its image uh, largely been invisible? Well, I think uh, 
because the political system, you know, uh, systematic racism is there, and the 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 problem will 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 stay there. Is if you tackle the systematic systematic racism and also the religion issues and and uh, so many uh, what's it called? Uh, I would say a uh, uh, little issue they make it into big. Uh, the the indigenous issue will be become really small. You know, so I think the. If if I'm I'm a person in charge of, of, of our <laughs> representation of Malaysia, I will put something that really important, that really uh, 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 talk about Malaysia. That I think we need to be uh, put prioritize on because if you look in the headline headline of the news, you usually end up with a headline that talking about nonsense thing and something that you not really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and you're absolutely right there's also this problem that, uh, that we at least in terms of culture uh, you know there's the Malay Chinese Indian thing of yeah. Malaya and then maybe the indigenous people of uh, Saban Sarawak right? the territories so Iban Karazan uh, uh, Dusun get represented but a lot of communities I mean, we live in a country of so many languages the Tamon language that I think many of us don't even would not even recognize if we heard it. Absolutely. I, wa I want to ask you though, you know, as somebody trying to represent a community, do but also an artist who's an individual, do you get trapped by your politics? Is your art trapped by the fact that you want to represent your community? Well, this is a good question because you know I, I was I was uh, thinking about it quite a lot, and then after reading many books as well, and you know. Sometimes, you know, I have uh, thinking maybe I should break away of what I'm doing now. But, you know, this is what I'm joy to do. You know, it's, you know, why, why give up something that I I love to do? And it's like uh, you, you you force yourself because you're afraid to be categorized of by by certain people. But you know, this is from my heart. This is not what I, uh, you know, this is not like a job that I need to post and I need to pretend to people that in order to get money, I need to pretend in front of camera or so on, you know. This is not, this is like directly from my heart and it's, it's something that I really uh, enjoy, you know, it's just... Okay, I want, in the few minutes that we have uh, left, the, the image behind us, right? Uh, and and it's, it's again, I think it's from the Mamari community. Yeah. It again has the ships, very small ships. <laughs> they're there. I see them on the horizon. Tell us about that. I mean, why is that image, which is so powerful, why did you want to depict that? Um, because, it's, of course, <laughs> the ship is there because of our consum consumerism culture. That's, that's the way the, sh the ship is there. And uh, I saw the. The indigenous people, uh, the, the, the image like that is become uh, still a taboo in the, our community. Still feel like uh, we are afraid to show something. For example, um, uh, the, the spirit of, uh, image of a spirit, uh, spirit object or spirit, uh, almost a religion, religious spirit thing, uh, still a taboo in my community. So, but I want to break that kind of, kind of mentality because if you keep doing that, Nobody will see the, 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 the indigenous uh, you know, culture, for example. Right, so this is a sacred image that yes. usually doesn't get, uh, Absolutely. Doesn't get shown outside. Yeah, it's the, same, it's the same thing with Moyang Bajos, it's the same thing. Right. Because uh, in, in, in my community, sometimes we cannot say this name in the night, for example. That's another taboo. Okay. Uh, yeah, because we're afraid the spirit will possess you, for example. And that... Uh, and you will get luck. You will get bad luck all the time right. if, if, you, if you break that taboo. Okay, in the final minutes we have, I know you're having a show at Balai Sunny at the end of the year. It's going to be a solo show. Yep. Tell us a little bit about what uh, you know, uh, we can anticipate from your work uh, for the end of the year. Uh, that one is going to be interesting because I won't, I, I won't do anything, uh, any work on, on the conventional material. I will use, uh, you know, uh, the material from my community. So I don't, I don't. The only thing that I use is acrylic or oil or, or color, colorized. Then, then, and the rest of it, I, I will use uh, uh, 
traditional indigenous uh, material. For example, the, the weaving that you see here, that's one of example that I will show. Thank you. I really look forward uh, to your show at the end of the year. I've been speaking to Shak Koyo, uh, he's an indigenous artist. Uh, this show here, uh, Land of a Thousand Guilds, Richard Ko Fine Art in Bangsa. Uh, that's all we have for you this week. Uh, come back next week. I'm sure at Kutin, only on Astro 1A. <laughs>